Normally this would be a time to trend, but that is so passe. <laughs> First we had Thanksgiving, then we had Friendsgiving, and now I introduce you folks to Trendsgiving. Oh, as families across the country turn to the internet with questions ahead of the big meal. So we've compiled a list of Google's most searched food words. And we've called in not one expert, not two experts, but ten <laughs> yes. of our favorite chefs to share some kitchen secrets that you will be thankful for. Yes. Right. Hi, guys. Okay, so let's trend give. What are we searching for? <laughs> the, the most popular search term is turkey, which segues me perfectly to Bobby Flay. Oh. All right, guys. Uh, you know, a lot of times uh, people ask me how many... Uh, hours per pound for the turkey and, and frankly that's not really a good way to judge whether your turkey is done 160 degrees for the breast for the white meat and about 170 degrees uh, for the dark meat and then you let it rest for about an hour but to make sure that your thermometer is working you can either put it in some ice cold water uh, oh. or some boiling water boiling water you, it will be 212 degrees but even easier some ice water put it in put your thermometer in there for about uh, 10 minutes and you want it to be 32 degrees this way you know your thermometer is actually working okay, okay. Cool. good one cool. another top search <laughs> item gravy jetila you're up all right so uh, the secret to lump free gravy just remember opposite temperatures roux is hot stock is cold and if you're using a slurry which is cornstarch and water you want to they have to go you want the slurry to go in cold as well uh, mixed with a whisk a really great tip is to use an immersion circulator i mean immersion blender it blends everything up really fast well by the way slurry also how hoda speaks hey, after thanksgiving hey. <laughs> wow. that came out of nowhere <laughs> People want to know more about stuffing. Lydia Bastianich, what can you tell us? Yes, you know when you're cooking and your food just doesn't have that flavor that you want. The Italian umami is porcini, dry porcini. You pass it through a little coffee grinder and you get yourself this delicious powder. You put it in the stuffings. Ah. Mm. Ah. Are you? You can put it in your meatloaf, your meatballs. You can even dry rub. In the sauce, you can use it all over. This is going to be your secret. My Lydia, secret nice, too. nice. Uh -huh. Can we go to young Joe Bastianich? Let's talk Vino. Since well, it's, 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 it no, no one ever asked me about turkeys or gravy or umami, <laughs> but they do ask me about wine every once in a while. So I took on the task of reinventing the ice cube for Thanksgiving. Yeah. So when your wine gets a little bit warm at the table, you take your cranberries, you freeze them till they're hard ah. like marbles, and then you put them in your white wine glass oh, and you smart. have an instant so ice smart. cube that's decorative, delicious, and does not dilute uh -huh. your libation. That. That's uh -huh. cute. Yeah. That's that's that. one, Joe. Nice. People are Googling cranberry sauce, by the way, and so we've got Sonny Anderson with some advice on that. Sonny? Oh, who is Team Texture? Are we Team Texture? <laughs> it's all about the texture. You've already got your cranberry sauce, a way to extend it and add texture to it. Jeezy, you know Jeff did this on the kitchen with know, us, right? I love it. Yeah, he tricked me. I didn't know what it was. You can add dried fruit. So think about it. You've already got cranberry sauce. You can add dried cranberries, dates, apricots, and even nuts. It bulks it up. It makes it into kind of like a chutney, and it's delicious and mm -hmm. chewy. Mm -hmm. Team right. Texture, baby! Yeah, Team Texture. <laughs> and that's the Brussels sprouts, Jeffrey. So, Karen, take it away. Well, I, thank you, Sonny, for that shout-out. I love Brussels sprouts, <laughs> and I think that a lot of people don't understand how to cook them, but I start thinking about Brussels sprouts at breakfast. Do you know why? Mm. Because that bacon fat is what I save mm. to saute these mm. suckers and get them really crispy mm. and delicious. Look at that. Isn't that look lovely? Oh, geez, Have a yum. bite there. Sunday. I'm going to take the bacon. There you go. <laughs> Brussels sprouts, bacon fat. That Way to go. Good. All right. Also, a lot of people are searching for green bean recipes. Alex Garnicelli, what advice can you give us? Yes. So, a secret I learned growing up, uh, my father would always blanch green vegetables in boiling salted water. Add a pinch of baking soda to that. And you'll get that extra green, vibrant color for that one lone green vegetable in the midst of all your mashed potatoes, cranberry sauce, stuffing, and gravy. <laughs> nice and green. All right. Stay strong, green bean. That's it. What else are we Googling? Mashed potatoes. Mr. Michael White, you're up. Yes, when making your mashed potatoes, nobody likes waterlogged mashed potatoes. So if you have a grate in your kitchen, which most of us do, and not a food processor, what you do is you bake your potatoes and or boil them, but then you can press them through the grate. And this is the first pressing if you will, and nobody likes to peel potatoes. So this way you don't get waterlogged potatoes, but you already have your pre-crush before ah. you start to mash again and add your copious amounts of butter and cream. Oh. Oh. Love that. Oh. Your first cold pressing. Let's just like go on that. to pecans or pecans, depending on where you, where you come from. This one's from J.J. Johnson. Hey, I J. call J. them pecans. Pecans, yeah. that's right. So as you run out of time <laughs> doing everything else in the Thanksgiving kitchen, run to the store, 
buy your favorite bought, bought start <laughs> pot pie. Uh-huh. But what I do is I grab the pecans, I throw them in a pan with some baking soda, brown sugar, saute them really ni- nicely, mm. throw them there on top, go. but just don't tell anybody you bought the pie. Oh. 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 By the way, a lot of people are Googling the word pie. Yeah. So we've got Laura Vitale with one more tip. So a good pie always starts with a good crust. And I know a lot of people don't have a food processor to really grind that butter into the tiniest little pieces. So what I suggest is you take a stick of butter and you pop it into the freezer and then you just grate it on your box grater and it looks like shredded cheese, but it's not, it's butter. And that allows you to get that perfect, even flakiness throughout your crust. Like that. Wow. Awesome. So what do we think? Good. That's, That's really good. Good stuff. Yeah. I want to thank all of our chefs. And by the way, we have a whole half hour of this all-star Thanksgiving coming up. But- Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.